Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem graph valid tree. So this is another leak code premium problem. So we are going to be solving it on lint code because it's free on that website. So we are going to be leveraging that. And also this is another problem from the blind 75 list. So this is graph valid tree. So we are going to be filling in one more problem from that blind 75 list today. So this is a graph problem. We are given n input nodes labeled from 0 to n minus 1. And we're given a list of undirected edges. The undirected means that the edges will go both ways. So, you know, we have a couple nodes like this. So the edge could go in either direction. And we just want to write a function to check whether these edges and nodes create a valid tree or not. So we know it's going to be some kind of graph, right? It could The graph could look something like this. Right, we don't care too much about the values here, but let's say this was the shape of a graph. Does this count as a tree? Well, yeah, this is a pretty familiar looking tree, right? So we would say, yes, this is a tree. But if I add one more edge like this one, is this a tree? It's not a tree. And the reason being is because we have a loop inside of this graph trees are not allowed to have loops that's just something that you you know you just have to kind of know the definition of because in this problem they don't tell you what exactly is the definition of a valid tree so we know trees can't have loops and there's one more condition for it to be a tree a tree needs to be connected so for example if i had a graph that looks like this this is not a tree because every node is not connected right like this node over here is just by itself it's not connected with the rest of the nodes so for it to be a valid tree we can't have loops and every node needs to be connected so simply we can take our input nodes and our edges and then check are they connected and do they not have a loop. And to be able to do that, so you can see the format that we're given our edges in, but we want to use these, using these edges, create an adjacency list. So basically for each node, for example, you know, one, we want to know what neighbors does one have. In this example, one only has a single neighbor, right? And that's zero. What neighbors does two have in this case two has a single neighbor and it's zero that's basically what we want to do we want to create a list of neighbors for every single input node and once we get that it'll be easy to traverse the graph and then we can perform our check to make sure that it is a tree so let's say we were given a graph like this is this a valid tree well just by looking at it we can tell yes that it is but what kind of algorithm can we do to determine that well, let's start at any node in this graph. We're always just going to choose node zero because it's, you know, the smallest value. Every single graph is going to have at least a node zero. If we don't even have node zero, like if we, if the number of nodes, if we don't have any nodes at all, then we can return true. Basically an empty graph does count as a tree technically. But so in this case, we don't have an empty graph. So we're going to start at node zero. What are we going to check? Basically, we're going to do a standard graph traversal. You could do breadth first search, but I'm going to do depth first search. And so for every single node, we're basically going to go on and visit its neighbors recursively and then continue to do that until we visited every single node that's connected to the zero node. At the end, what we're going to do is take the number of input nodes that we were given. In this case, it's five. And then we're going to check if the number of visited nodes matches if the number of visited nodes matches the input value for nodes, that means that every every node inside the graph is connected, right? That's one of the things we're looking for is, is the graph connected? If the number of nodes we visit matches the number of nodes given to us, we can guarantee that the graph is connected. The other thing we're going to check for is to make sure that this graph does not contain any cycles or loops. If we ever encounter a cycle, like for example, you know, we have an edge like this if we went here we went here we went here and then we got back to zero that counts as a cycle then we would have to return false immediately but if we don't reach a cycle and this condition ends up being true then we're going to return true so since we start at zero what we're going to do is to our set of visited nodes it's going to be a hash set because that's the most efficient way to do it so we're going to add that node zero because zero has been visited so then we're going to recursively go to its first neighbor one 
So now we're going to be at one, right? And from, from the perspective of zero, we're going to visit one. After we're done with that, we're going to visit two. Then we're going to visit three. But first, we're going to start at one. So now we're at one, right? We're going to go ahead and add one to the visit set. And we notice one has two neighbors, right? It has a neighbor zero, and it also has a neighbor four. Now, one problem with our algorithm is for every node, including one, we're always going to want to visit every single neighbor it has. We know that the neighbor zero has already been visited, right? So if we end up going back here, we're going to see, okay, we're visiting zero again. Zero happens to be in our visit set. So that means we detected a loop, but technically this graph does not have a loop. So how can we get around this edge case of every time we visit a node like like one, we're going to end up going back to where we came from. And that's always going to give us a false positive of detecting a loop. It's going to be a false positive for a loop. How can we get rid of that? Well, every time we visit a node such as one, what we're going to give it is one additional value. And that's going to be previous previous is going to be what the previous node we just visited was so when we get to one we're going to say the previous node that we visited was zero so we're not going to go back to zero from this position if there happened to be another way back to zero for example let's say four ended up connecting to zero then we would detect a loop right but one, if we ever got to four, we would say, okay, the previous value from four happened to be one, right? So this four came from one. So, so we won't get any false positives if we do it like this. So from one, the only node we're going to visit is going to be the neighbor four. So yes, we're going to go to four now and we're going to see, okay, is four already visited? It's not. So let's add it to the visit set. So four is going to be added as a node that's been visited. Now, we know the previous node from four happened to be one, right? So we're never gonna go back directly to one. We're gonna skip that and we're gonna check, does four have any other neighbors? It does not. So this is gonna be our base case for our depth for search. We're gonna return true because so far we have not encountered a loop. So we can return true. If we did encounter a loop, then we would have to return false. But so far we're good. We're gonna return and then we're gonna get to one. And from one, we have no more neighbors left to visit either. So then we're gonna return back to zero. And by the way, what kind of previous value would we feed into zero? Because it's gonna be the first value we end up, it's gonna be the first node that we end up visiting. So we can give it a default previous value of negative one because we know that no nodes in the graph are actually gonna have a value of negative one because they start at zero. So now let's go to the next neighbor of zero. We'll go down to two. Okay, check. Has two been visited? It hasn't. So let's add it to our visit set. Two is being added. Now two does not have any additional neighbors. It only has that neighbor that it came from, node zero. So we're, we're not going to keep going. And then we're going to go to the last neighbor of zero. We're going to go down to three. And once again, check has three been visited. It hasn't. So then we're going to add three to the visit set. Then we're going to go back to zero. And then zero does not have any additional neighbors. So now we're done. We didn't detect a loop, so that's good. But let's make sure that the graph is connected. It does the... So the number of input nodes we were given is always going to be given as a parameter. It was n equals five. Now let's check the length of the visit set because that tells us how many nodes are connected and it happens to exactly be five, right? So in this case, we are going to end up returning true. Now, if I changed the graph, let's say this edge did not exist, of course, then we would not have visited this three node. Then, you know, the length of our set would have been four, but the n value was five. So does n equal four, the size of our visit set? No, that does not match, right? So therefore, in this case, we would have to return false. We didn't detect a loop, but the graph is not connected. So we have to return false because it's not a valid tree. And similarly, let's say we had an additional node from four to zero, then in our depth for search, what we would have done is, okay, we'd have gone to zero and then we're visiting zero. So we'd check, is zero already in our visit set? Yes, it is. Zero is right here. So that means we're visiting it twice. That means we detected a loop. That means we return false immediately. So that's the main idea of this algorithm. Now the time complexity, since we're only you know, having to traverse each node once at most once and each edge at most once, the overall time complexity is going to be number of edges plus the number of vertices or nodes. So just E plus V. And that's also going to 
basically be the memory complexity as well because this is we're going to be doing this recursively and we're also going to be needing to create an adjacency list of connecting every single node to all of its neighbors and i think it'll be if it's not super clear right now i think it'll be pretty clear once i show you the code it's not too bad let's get into it so one base case is if we aren't given any nodes at all. So if n was zero, so in that case, we would return true. There's no graph to traverse, but an empty graph does technically count as a tree. And if we do have some nodes, then we're gonna create an adjacency list. So what I'm gonna do is, in, first of all, for every single node in our input, so basically n is the number of nodes. So for i in range, n i'm going to create a pair in our hash map and each pair is going to be the value of that node and an empty list initially and then i'm going to go through every pair of nodes in every single edge so an edge is basically a pair of nodes being connected right so what i'm going to say is and remember these edges are not directed so they go both ways so for the adjacency list of n1 i'm going to append n2 to that list and similarly for the adjacency list of n2 i'm going to append n1 and then i'm going to start defining our depth first search remember we are going to pass we're, we are going to have to know which node we're visiting so i'm going to use i as the value of the node that we're visiting remember we're also passing in one other variable the previous node that we came from so we we don't you know get false positives for loop detection and so you can see I'm defining this function inside of our outer function. That just means I don't have to pass in the variables like adjacency list into this each time. And actually, I need to define one more variable. That's going to be visit, which is going to be a set, which is going to keep track of all the nodes we've visited. So one base case is going to be if I is in the visit set, that means it's already been visited. That means we've detected a loop. That means we can return false. If not, that means I hasn't been visited, so then we can go ahead and add it to visit. So let's add I, and then let's go through every single neighbor of I. So every single node, let's call it J in the adjacency list. So the list of neighbors of I. And if J happens to be equal to the, the previous node, the node that we came from, then we're gonna skip this iteration of the loop. We can do that with the continue statement. If it's not the previous node that we came from, then we're going to call depth first search on this node, j. And as the previous value, we're going to pass in i because that's where we're coming from when we arrive at node j. Now, if the return value of this is equal to false, so if not the result of this, then we're going to immediately return false because that means we detected a loop. If this does not return false, then we're basically going to continue. We're going to go through all the other neighbors of the node i. And if we go through every single neighbor without returning false, then we can return true, meaning we did not detect a loop. So we want to now return the result, right? And of course we know we're gonna have to call our depth for search function. We're gonna start at node zero. And as a previous value, we're gonna pass in negative one because negative one is never gonna exist in our graph. But is this enough? Remember our depth for search, what it's returning as the true and false is only detecting if there's a loop like a cycle or not but it's not making sure that the entire graph is connected. So we're only gonna return true if this function returns true and if n, which is the input of the number of nodes, exactly matches the length of the visit set. Basically every single node happened to be visited. That means every node is connected. That means the graph is a tree. So only if both of these are true are we going to return true. So this is the entire code and I can show you if I slide this up a little bit that this does run and it does run pretty efficiently. So I hope that this was helpful. We're basically just doing a standard depth for search on this graph. And if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.